Hello friends, welcome to SI Technologies. So in the previous video, as part of the Python automation series with ETL testing. So in the previous video, we have explained table availability check. So for the new guys, whoever, whoever listening this particular video, right? Just you can go through these two videos, Python automation testing. There are three videos which are available. You can go to this particular videos and you can go through this then on top of it you can go here you can continue this particular video so what i'm trying to say here so for example in the previous video we have prepared the, some python script which is going to check whether the source tables as well as target tables are exist or not let me go to that particular code so now this is the original code which we have written first what we are doing here we are importing the that oracle lab module and once we have imported then on top of it we are giving the username password and dsl to connect with the oracle here i'm giving the nothing but a super user which is nothing but a system and admin where we are going ahead and we can access across the schemas so then on top of it we have a source tables and target tables and schema and target scheme also we have given and then we are checking it out here whether the that particular table is exist or not by writing the simple python function just i'm using here i'm not modularizing the code as well as i'm not using error logging mechanism i'm not using any even try and accept method as well for logging the errors so here i'm writing very simple python to make you aware of it some of the guys are very new to python so i don't want them to confuse so simply what i have done if you wanted to create a function use the def keyword and you are going to create the function and then whatever the parameters which you wanted to pass it out just give them that parameters and then those parameters you are going to use it here in the here in the function so first let me explain here this function def table exists cursor we are passing table name and schema name so how the execution starts right first it is going to check okay it is going to check this main and if it is a main then it is going ahead and it is going to execute the main method so in main method what we are doing we are kind of, we are creating we are creating the connection so how you are creating by importing the by importing the this module cx oracle this is the module which is going to be you have to import it once you import it this method is this module is having certain functions if you wanted to create a function you are going to use the connect to connect the in within the connect method okay what are the parameters which you have to pass you have to pass the username password as well as the dsni so where you are taking those here you have defined those variables here those variables here now other than that here you are creating a cursor once you create a connection from that particular connection you are creating a cursor once you have created cursor right what you are trying to do so here you are you are just i'm printing here print checking source tables so here we are executing the check tables check tables source table source schema cursor so if you see here source tables these are the list of tables which we have defined and as well as list of tables list and schema name now now for example in this case here only the point which i wanted to make so here we have a four tables right now okay now you wanted to test it of 10 tables or 15 tables so as well as you wanted to change this connection details as well and username password ig password also it is going to change okay then that case right now whatever you have written right everything is hard coded hard coded which means whenever you wanted to make any changes then then again you have to come to the code then on top of it you have to make changes then you have to run it up again instead of that instead of that what you can do okay you can simply okay whatever the list values right here just you can pass through as a configuration values configuration values so how you can do that so here you can observe right so there is a module config dot config parser dot config parser so generally in generally okay if you are working in especially with the development okay or even in automation okay so you should not be hard coded the hard coded the values you should be using parameter parameterized okay nothing but a, you are going to pass as a parameter pass as a parameter how you can do that okay so let me give you so here you are checking the tables 
okay whether if the tables are exist okay if the tables are exist then we are checking it out table is exist if table is not exist then you can say table is not exist here okay now other than that now this is the simple functionality which we are checking so in the coming classes okay in the coming video series okay what i can go i can go ahead and i can check the co columns as well as data type and then we'll go with the then we'll go with the data type length as well after that we are going to cover the record count then we'll go with the even data validation as well these are the things which i'm going to cover as part of this just consider it it is a baseline okay so don't think it's kind of you know it's a completely coded thing like a foolproof coding just to make you aware of it very simple way which i'm explaining by writing simple statement let's not get into think of it okay let's not judge this code because i know how to write the code and how, how, how can i optimize these things as well but right now for your betterment purpose you are a new babies in terms of python some of the guys are very good at it okay the intention of this video sir very new to python i wanted to make them understand how the things are working so now here you you are having this particular thing everything you have hard coded now i wanted to pass these details as a parameter as a parameter how you can pass it as a parameter so generally if you wanted to pass as a parameters we are going to have a property file nothing but a config.ini file okay how you can define first you are going to have a tag okay within this particular uh, database okay what are the details you wanted to pass you wanted to pass username password and dsn id under table names what you wanted to pass you can pass as a table name now here you have given source tables and target tables now here you have given four tables now now if you can see here now let me remove it this okay now you have three tables okay just i'm i'm letting you know you have a three tables close tables target tables source schema and target schema this is you have defined as part of the as part of the config.ini nothing but a parameter file in a simple language i don't want to get into technical language it is a parameter file okay now how can you access this parameter file so by simply in main function you are going to import the config parser nothing but this is the one of the module which is available in the python if you wanted to read if you wanted to read a uh, property file just you can go ahead and you can use the config parser under that config parser you can have a config parser method so once you created that particular method then after that you can read config.read method using that you are going to read the config.ini file ini file nothing but a whatever the file which we have defined here right these are the this file is been read by whom config dot config dot read once you read it okay so generally how you can access these are the tags simply i can say in a simple way database tags under database tags what do you want if you wanted to get the username so config dot database and username so this is the you have to use this particular syntax okay to get that particular value and the same time here you have to use it and same thing you are going to use the dsn perspective as well and same thing with the source table but in the previous case okay what we have defined we have defined specifically this source tables and target tables we have defined as a list but here we are passing in the config.ini file is a comma separated comma separated now you are reading these tables and but you are reading these tables by comma separated now if you can use the sp dot split method automatically what it does internally it converts as a list internally it converts as a list so using split method we are going to convert this particular whatever the tables right here we are going to convert as a nothing but a list we are going to source tables list and target tables we are going to keep it as a list now here you see source schema and target scheme now now whatever the values which we are having it here right so we are going ahead and we are going to use this how we are going to use so here if you wanted to make a connection same thing six dot connect so we are not changing anything at the code level just we are parameterizing the code okay now username which is coming from the config.ini file password also which is coming from the config.ini and dsn also which is coming from config.ini nothing but it is going to come from property file and then connection.cursor which we are creating now here the code is 
checking the source tables. Now, while you are checking the source tables, previously you are passing source tables, source schema and cursor. Now, source tables from where you are getting, you are getting from the here. Nothing but a config.ini file. Here. Target also you are getting from target. Nothing but a here from config file. So, target schema and source schema, which you are going to get that from the config file only. Config file. So, the functions which are clear on the everything is same. Okay. We are not changing any function, whatever we have explained in the previous video. So, if you are not clear on this functionality, what I am explaining, go through the previous video before this video in this playlist, then you will understand. Now, now, sir, you are explaining everything is fine, Ravindra. Now, what exactly you are going to achieve with this? Now, let me run the code, then you will understand. Now, here, if you observe in the, here, if you observe here, right? So, here I have run. First, I'm checking, checking, checking for source table. I'm printing it out. Employees and departments and reasons. Okay. Now, if I can go ahead and if I see here, here also departments, employees and reasons. Target also. Now, if I can go ahead and see here, if I wanted to add table, where I'm going to add? I'm going to add at the code level. Nothing but a, within the code, I have to get into it and I have to add it. But if I wanted to add, okay, for example, if I wanted to add additional table, okay, I need not to get into code. I need not to make any changes to the code. Just I can simply come here and I can add one more table. Okay, if I wanted to add much more tables, like, you know, here, jobs. Okay, now if I can take it up this, okay, just yeah, if I can make it here, change, automatically what it is going to happen, it is going to read by the code. Okay, how it is going to read? It is going to read by config parser, config.read automatically what it is going to happen previously it was coming three tables now it is going to come as a five tables in the source tables let me look at it and run it out i have saved it now you can see here what is that jobs okay jobs locations also which is exists previously it was three now we have done four and five now even if you wanted to add you need not to come and change the code at any point of time just to you can change here okay you can change here here also you can change here, okay, by comma separated values, comma separated values. Now, if you wanted to, in a such a scenario, if you wanted to go ahead and change the even, even source schema as well as target schema. Now, you have a HR. Generally, what is going to happen, the scenario why I'm explaining this, opti the better way to write the code, why I'm asking you to write the parameter code. Suppose you are doing in, QA testing, nothing but a first you are doing in a QA environment. Later point of time, you wanted to do it in stage environment. At the time, you cannot go ahead and every time make the changes at code and changing the code. It is not going to be the right way here. You need not to do the rework. It's going to be a rework. Again, if you wanted to do it at QA environment, again and again, you have to change these values. Instead of that, okay, at code level, if you can pass it as a parameter file, then what it is going to happen it is going to just you are going ahead and you are going to change the parameter file you are not going to change the code at all so what are the benefits which you are going to get so it is going to be more you work perspective it is going to be less you need not to change the code and it is very useful if you wanted to if you wanted to pass more values just you can go ahead and you can pass it at the same time by mistake you have written 100 lines of code now if you are if you are trying to make change because of this particular thing and if you mess up with the existing code then automatically what it is going to happen so again you have to debug the code where the particular thing is failed all those things it is a headache instead of that if you can pass it to configuration file automatically you will be able to do it so through configuration file you are passing all the details as a parameters so that it will be easy so where you what with what we are using those by just config parser we are doing it so you can look at the code okay let me maximize this okay look at the code and pause it and write the code so that you will be get benefited so before once you read the once you write the code right here you have to even use this particular file the file name is config.ini if you wanted to change the file name here whatever i'm reading line number 29 right you can whatever the file which you wanted to define define your own name and give that name here okay so this is the way you have to parameterize the code so simply if i can make it i have to use the 
config parser okay as a con config parser dot config parser and i have to read config dot read once i read it within this file what are the things which is available so within this file you have a database and as well as tables so in database that is a connection level details so tables is nothing but a, which tables we are going to validate it so now what you can do using this particular tag config dot database under that what i wanted username at the same time like this is the way which you are going to extract the variables values from the values from the config file same way here you are just uh, using the split method which is nothing but a internally using the comma separated values you are splitting by default it is going to create the list list it is going to create it that list we are assigning as a variables so this is the way you have to parameterize and please do comment and share with others as well so that they are going to get benefited so consider it is a baseline for you and going further what i'm going to do right now i'm going with the very my base code okay and i'm not going getting into very technical as well because if i get into technical you will feel that okay uh, everything is too much for me okay i don't want to continue just i'm mean, giving it as a layman terminology okay going further what i can do i'll go get into much more technical and then step by step you are going to learn and we are going to parameterize everything and we are going to build the framework okay how we can do the automation with etl testing that's it guys thank you for it thank you for thank you for supporting me thank you so much and as well please share with others